So far in the series we've looked at model serializers. What I want to do briefly in this video is touch upon how to create a generic serializer that can represent any data and not specifically data that's tied to a model. And that's very common. You might want to aggregate data together from multiple places, for example, and return that as a JSON response to your clients. So in order to do that, we don't want to tie the serializer to a particular model in the application. We want to actually just return that data and we want to be able to do that in a generic way. As it says here in the documentation, the serializer's in REST framework is similar to Django's form and model form classes. The serializer class that we're going to look at now gives you a powerful generic way to control the output of your responses. Whereas the model serializer, that's more similar to a model form in the sense that it's tied to a model in your application. So it's going to reference the fields that are on that model. Now I want to create a serializer in this video and that serializer is going to return all of the products that we have in the database but it's also going to return a count and that's going to have the number of products so it's going to perform a bit of an aggregation to get that count and it's also going to perform another aggregation to get back the maximum price of a product in the system. So let's go back to serializers.py and at the bottom here what I'm going to do is define a product info serializer. So we're going to call this product info serializer and this time we're going to inherit from the serializer class, not the model serializer. So I'm going to add a comment here. We want to get all products. We want to get the count, i.e. the number of products in the system. And we also want to get the maximum price of a product that we have in this database. It's a bit of a contrived example, but let's go with that for now. Now from the previous video, to get all of the products here, as part of this serializer, we can actually add a nested serializer here. So let's add a field here called products, and that's going to be an instance of the product serializer. And because we want to return all of them, we need to pass many equals true here because it's not going to be a single object. It's going to be JSON data that represents all of the products in the database. As well as that, we want to add a count, and that's going to be a number. So that's going to be a serializers.integer field. And finally, the maximum price of any product in the database that's going to be a serializers.float field. So again, we've got these serializer fields, just like we have on models and forms in Django. For example, a float field, an integer field, and of course we have our nested product serializer. Let's remove the comment at the top, and let's now go to views.py. We're going to write a view for the serializer. So let's go down here, and again, we're gonna decorate this with API view, and we're gonna only limit this to get requests. Now I'm going to call this view product underscore info and what we're going to do is take the request and because we've decorated this with API view that's going to be a Django REST framework request instance. Now we're going to build this serializer data up gradually here so we need all of the products in order to pass them into the serializer so I'm going to get them from the database and we can use a call here of product.objects.all that's going to give us back all of the products and then we're going to create our serializer here and that's going to be our product info serializer. So we need to import this. Let's copy that. Let's go to the top here and we're going to import this. Now, if we're using a tool like Rough or iSort, we can clean up these imports, but I'm not going to do that just now. I'm now going to copy the product info serializer and we can reference that down here in our view. So we're going to instantiate that and I'm going to pass a dictionary of data into the serializer. And that dictionary of data is going to match what's expected based on these fields here. So we have the three fields for the products, the count, and the maximum price. Let's go back to views.py. The first key that we're going to add to this dictionary is going to be the products. And because we're using that nested serializer, we can just pass the query set in. And the serializer is going to understand how to convert that query set of products into JSON data. And that's going to be returned as a products field here. We now need the count. How do we get that? So let's add a key here called count. And this has to match the name of the field on the serializer. All we need to do in order to get the number of products is just use the len function and pass the query set of products in there. That's going to give us the count. And finally, the maximum price here, that's going to be a little bit trickier. We're going to take the products that we got back here and we're going to call the dot aggregate function and we're going to pass in an aggregation here. So we want to get back the maximum price. So we're going to use the max aggregation in Django and that's going to be over the price field that we have in the products model. So if we go to models.py and go up to our product model, which is up here, we've got a price field. That's what we want to get the maximum price over that column in the, in the database. So what we're going to do here is pass that to our max aggregation and we need to import that at the top. 
So what I'm going to do at the very top here is from django.db.models, we're going to import max, and then we can use that aggregation here, and that's going to give us back the maximum price. Now when we perform aggregation in this way, we need to then get that piece of aggregated data out of the resulting dictionary. So we can do that by indexing in, and it's the same key name that we create here as a keyword argument. We can pass any keyword argument, but it should be a name that represents the aggregation. And if you want to know more about how to aggregate data in Django, we had a video in the ORM series, so you can check that out. It should be appearing on the screen now. So we have a product info serializer, and we're passing the data that we need into that. So that serializer now contains the data it needs. All we need to do now is we need to reference dot data and return a REST framework response. So let's return that at the bottom. And then we're going to create a URL for this Django view. So let's go to urls.py. And at the top here, we've got the products URL. I'm going to create a new URL here, products slash info. And that's going to call the new view that we have here called product info. So let's save this and we're going to go back to views.py and I'm going to go to the browser and go to this URL. So let's go back to our API. I'm going to change this to slash products slash info and let's see what kind of response we get. Now we've got the key of products and that represents all of the products in the database, but we also have the two aggregated fields at the bottom. So we've got all of the nested data for the products here as part of the response, but we've got the aggregated numbers here for the count and the maximum price as well. So that's some kind of arbitrary aggregated data that we're returning here. And it's very easy to build up a serializer with the fields that we need and then pass that data into the serializer. As you can see here, we're using a Python dictionary and we use ORM expressions here to aggregate some of that data and pass that in. So to summarize what's going on here, we get all of the products from the database. We then instantiate the product info serializer and we pass the fields that we created on that serializer in as a dictionary of data. And that has the values here that are gonna be returned as part of the response. And then we can just go to the endpoint and we get the response. So that's an example of how to show aggregated data in Django REST framework. And it's an example of how you can create flexible serializers that are not tied to specific models in your application, but instead represent any kind of data that you want to actually return in an API response. So that's gonna be all for this video. In the last three videos, we've covered serializers in Django REST framework, and we've covered a lot of the main concepts. In the next video, we're going to move on to database query profiling in our APIs. And we're going to use a tool called Django Silk in order to analyze our SQL queries and analyze the requests that are sent to our API. So that's coming up. Thanks again for watching, guys. And if you're enjoying this content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if you want to support the channel, we have a coffee page. Any donations are greatly appreciated and will help keep this content free on YouTube. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.